TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett meets Russian President Vladimir Putin in the Black Sea Resort of Sochi. IAEA Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi calls upon the world powers to censor the Islamic Republic of Iran. Turkey and Iran sign a Memorandum of Understanding on bolstering bilateral cooperation in the field of security. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett traveled to Russia early this morning, where he held a relatively lengthy meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Prior to boarding his plane, the Israeli leader highlighted the unique relationship which Jerusalem has with Moscow and asserted the one million Israeli Russian speakers, whom he labeled to be a bridge between the two countries. <laughs> במדיניות החוץ של מדינת ישראל, גם בגלל המעמד המיוחד של רוסיה באזור והמעמד הבינלאומי וגם בגלל מיליון דוברי הרוסית בישראל שמהווים גשר בין שתי המדינות. באופן כללי, מדיניות החוץ והמעמד הבינלאומי של ישראל בהתחזקות משמעותית יש אנרגיות גדולות והכיוון הוא טוב מאוד. After arriving at the Black Sea Resort of Sochi, Prime Minister Bennett was hosted by President Putin for their first face-to-face -face meeting since the Israeli leader took office early this year. In their initial remarks, which were made prior to the meeting that was held behind closed doors, Bennett asserted that the deep bond between Israel and Russia, as well as relations between the two peoples, was rooted in the perception that Putin is indeed a true friend of the Jewish people. <laughs> וכל הדיון יהיה מושתת על הקשר העמוק בין שתי המדינות, בין שתי האומות שאתה הובלת ב-20 השנים האחרונות את הקשר הזה ואני יכול לומר לך בשם אזרחי ישראל אנחנו רואים בך ידיד אמת של העם היהודי the Russian head of state for his part voiced hope that despite the political challenges which Israel experienced in recent years, the relationship between Moscow and Jerusalem will remain solid. President Putin further noted that while extensive challenges in Syria remain vigorous, Russia is keen on collaborating with Israel in the field of counterterrorism. Конечно, мне будет очень интересно и полезно обменяться с вами информацией по ситуации в регионе. Как вы знаете, мы предпринимаем усилия для того, чтобы восстановить сирийскую государственность, укрепить ее. Здесь есть и проблемные вопросы, их немало. Но есть и точки соприкосновения и возможности для сотрудничества. Особенно это касается вопросов, связанных с борьбой с терроризмом. While a number of bilateral and global issues were discussed in the subsequent meeting behind closed doors, the chief focus of deliberations between the two leaders included Syria and Iran, including Israel's freedom of action in the first against the latter, and Tehran's nuclear program, which has reached a critical phase. It is important to know that earlier this week, the Al Tanf Air Force Base, which houses U.S. troops, was targeted by a combined strike of statistical rockets and unmanned aerial systems, or UAS. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. However, damage was caused to the installations. A U.S. military source initially noted to TV7 that the method by which the attack was executed is near identical to those perpetrated against bases housing U.S. service members in Iraq by Iranian-backed militias. With that being said, she emphasized that no attribution will be made until after a thorough investigation provides clear evidence of those responsible. Separately, the U.S. Military Central Command noted that it maintains the inherent right of self-defense 
and will respond at a time and place of its choosing. It is important to highlight that on Wednesday of last week, October 13th, unidentified aircraft struck a number of structures near both Sirius Palmyra and al Kamal Desert region, resulting in both losses and extensive damage to Iranian proxy infrastructure. While neither the IDF nor the U.S. Air Force confirmed their involvement, Iranian proxy militias attributed responsibility to both Israel and the United States and vowed retribution. Despite no immediate confirmation of a correlation between the two events, the ongoing investigation does not rule it out. Turning to the United States, where the International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi called upon world powers to censor the Islamic Republic for impeding his agency's inspectors from doing their work in Iran. In a one-on-one -on -one interview with Stimson Center President Brian Finlay, Secretary General Grossi was asked whether censoring Iran in the next Board of Governors meeting, scheduled for the latter part of November, was indeed a good idea. Center. Good idea? Yeah, it is. Grossi further highlighted the complexity in which his agency has to contend with the Iranian nuclear file since the regime does not allow for tangible deliberations to take place. What I'm trying to concentrate now is on the, on the more, most immediate um, challenges that we have in terms of my interactions uh, with Iran. And then at the same time, as we go along and as we do these things, the overall situation uh, gets influenced uh, by that. When asked whether a mutual return to compliance by the United States and Iran would ultimately allow for the IAEA to have access to all suspected nuclear sites, Grossi said the following. It takes more than two to that tango. It's Iran and it's the United States and there are other uh, players. Uh, so I hope they can see eye to eye and there are nuances. Of course, um, uh, it's a bit of a boutade what I said mm -hmm. about the United States and, and Iran. It is clear that there is a big thing between, between them in terms of uh, sanctions. Mm -hmm. There are sanctions coming from other countries as well mm -hmm. in the JCPOA. Well, Director General Grossi further asserted that Iran's nuclear program has reached a critical phase that must be taken note of. He does believe that at this stage, information remains available for negotiations in Vienna to proceed, despite noting earlier that outstanding questions remain regarding undeclared uranium traces, which Iran has not yet provided tangible answers for. We have been keeping the patient stable as much as we can in terms of the, the amount and quality of information that we can put on the table as a baseline, which is indispensable for any further negotiation. In other news, Turkey and Iran signed a memorandum of understanding on bolstering bilateral cooperation in the field of security. In a meeting held in Tehran, Turkish Interior Minister Suleyman Soylu and his Iranian counterpart Ahmad Wahidi signed the deal which aims to increase and develop security cooperation between the two countries and knowledge sharing in the fields related to combating terrorism, drug smuggling and organized crime. Returning to Jerusalem, where Indian Minister of External Affairs Subrahman Yam Jaishankar concluded an extensive visit to Israel yesterday with a final meeting hosted by Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett. In the latter's opening remarks, Premier Bennett highlighted the deep friendship and love which Israelis hold for India and its people. I can speak on behalf of the Israelis. We love India. Uh, so it's, it's sort of a consensus in Israel. We view India as a huge friend, the Indian people. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, expanding the relationship uh, in, in all fields. New Delhi's top diplomat for his part echoed the deep friendship between the two countries and stressed the need to capitalize on those relations which could reach new levels of cooperation. Uh, we are today, I think, uh, at a very important stage of our relationship because things have gone very well for us. But uh, we, it has opened up a whole lot of possibilities. Uh, so I think the challenge is how to work to take uh, our relationship to the next highest level. Uh, and 
uh, I can only tell you that the, uh, the sentiment and the interest in India in our ties with uh, Israel is very, very strong. Uh, I don't think any of my visits have been followed with as much attention back home as the one to Israel. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up India in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.